greetings uh, and welcome to uh, yet another video where we're going to talk about uh, SPSS. Um, it has been a while since I recorded videos. Um, I had uh, gadget issues, laptop issues, but I'm glad to say that um, I'm back with Ben and nothing is going to stop me now. Yeah, so I'm just going to continue from where we ended last time. Last time we talked about uh, SPSS overview and then we had an introduction uh, to SPSS as well as far as how to create a data file to prepare um, a file where you're going to capture your data. So I'm just going to continue from where we ended. Uh, but this time I am going to uh, create a file uh, like um, uh, this one. Um, you can see here it has got uh, uh, this set of variables code, read, exam, attendance, age, and gender. So it just shows exam performance uh, for different kind of people uh, based on certain age um, you can see that we are ranging from uh, we've got 16 12 18 14 15 and so on and so on uh, so it looks like these are uh, teenagers and then we have got a classification in terms of their gender right uh, and we also have attendance how how much in terms of percentage did they attend and then what was their score percentage score in the exam as well as how many how many minutes or hours did they spend uh in reading okay and you can see that on the end uh on the end of the document here uh on the far right we've got a description of what those variables mean where the first one which is called is participant code read is daily time spent reading exam in the exam performance in percentage the data for this variable was collected after the intervention and then we see attendance uh, program attendance in terms of percentage as well age uh, of the child and then uh, the gender of the child so we're going to create this file uh, into SPSS and of course first we start by creating uh, the, the, the variables let me mention something about about code code is, the code is not important uh, for our analysis but it is important for you to identify a case so you realize that uh, we've got one two three going on up to four six from from the top you can uh from the uh, overview you can tell that we have got 46 cases uh or 40, 46 participants in this data so that's the reason why code uh, is very important let's suppose that you you see that when you wanted to capture a 70 you captured captured a 700 okay maybe you added an extra zero by mistake so for you to identify it you realize that um you might need to to to, to check the code uh, that is against that exam percentage which is and you see that the code is 16 and then uh, you just have to go back to your red data which is this file and check uh, on code number 16 which is case number 16 what was the exam value for it and then you see that it's a 70 then you would know that the 700 that I captured was actually supposed to be a 70 and then you just have to remove an extra an extra zero so that's the reason why code uh, is always important to put it whenever you are preparing your excel file uh, such that whenever you make a mistake you can always reference it let me give you another scenario where code uh, comes in handy so let's say you've got a questionnaire that you've distributed to your to your participants and they filled it and then they gave you back that the physical questionnaire and then as you're capturing you are, you, you are supposed to label um, each questionnaire so if i'm capturing question number one that particular questionnaire i label it one and then I capture the values. And then the second question here, I label it a two, and then capture the values. The second, third question here, I label it a three, and so on and so on and so on. The reason is, whenever you make a mistake in capturing, when you, when you and then you realize that when uh, with the moment you start analyzing your data, you can investigate the case that is against that wrong value, and then go back to your questionnaires that you had labeled, okay? And then identify the case number that is labeled on the questionnaire and then you'll be able to tell uh, or find out the actual number that was supposed to be against that variable so that's the reason why code is very important uh, only when it comes to validation or data cleansing but otherwise if your data is perfect uh, you're not going to use code uh, in, in in your analysis uh, it, it, it's, it, 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 its job would have been done so you don't need it anymore so uh, in this uh, tutorial we're just going to do uh, I mean, capture all these uh, variables starting with code. Okay, so again, you go and create your file. Uh, so I, I usually start with type in data, and then it's going to create an empty SPSS file 
which is here and then of course you've got variable view and data view here and then the variable view like i said that's where you type your variables so our first variable is code which you can name case and the moment you press tab it assumes that um this is the data that is going to be in there okay and if you can if you can check our data you can see that code is numeric actually all our data are numeric so that's the data that we're going to give to all our variables okay so uh numeric when i leave it as numeric and then width is eight width is basically referring to how many uh number of text uh, or numbers are going to be in there okay so if we've got a zero there which means it's not going to accept a number if we've got a one which means it can have a character of one uh in other words you can enter a 10 you can enter a 15 in there okay so that's where the width comes in comes in handy and the reason why you you you, you want to assign a, a width is because you want to avoid your spc file to be too big okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh, leave it at um, uh, three okay and then there are not just more places if you check out our data there's no data uh that is with decimal place so we're gonna remove decimal place so all we have zero decimal places so uh, by killing that downward arrow you then reduce the numbers if you click the top one arrow you then increase so i'm gonna have zero decimal places and then i'm just gonna give it a label and say uh this variable uh, represents the case number or participant number whatever that you want to type and then values we're not gonna put any it's gonna be none uh, because one the values is there are uh, because it's a case there's no case that is going to be missing so we're going to leave it in none then and then columns we're going to leave it at eight and then by default it's taken right right means uh it's a number so basically all numbers by default are right aligned uh but if that, that if, if it, is, it is text it is going to be left aligned let me just change the year to to string and then you see that it will change and show you left alignment so any string of text is going to be left aligned any numeric is going to be right aligned okay uh, for measure you can leave it at nominal uh because we are still not going to use it in any analysis so it doesn't matter so we're gonna leave it as 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 nominal it's fine even if you put it as ordinal or nominal or not or, or, or scale it doesn't matter because we're still not going to analyze it okay so the next one uh is um uh read then the next one is exam so i'm gonna have read and then my next one is uh exam and of, of course you can always um copy and paste these uh these uh headings um you you will be fine uh, in order to save time of typing so second one is attendance and again you can always uh give short names to these names um because you don't want to spend much time typing uh so you can always do that so i'm just going to type all of them um, and then go back and fix one or two things all right so um we don't want decimal places for all of them because you saw our raw data does not have decimal places right and then this just says um time spent in reading okay and the next one is exam uh percentage um percentage and then the next one is attendance percentage okay age of participant and then the last one is gender of participant okay All right um and um the only one that we're going to give a value uh is gender where we are saying that according to the definition that we have here um uh, gender uh it says that uh, or it doesn't say but what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna say two stands for females and then one for males so so i'm gonna say one stands for male okay and then two uh, stands for female I'm gonna click. okay right and then uh, i'm gonna talk about missing values another day uh, but just know that we're going to um because if you check our data is with missing values here yeah? right uh like uh here right missing values uh here missing value okay this is age uh, we're supposed to have there's no one who can have it zero, age zero um who, 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 who is writing exams okay so we know that whenever there's a zero here we know that that data is missing okay 
and then he, the, a person cannot cannot attend cannot can can fail to uh, can fail to attend cannot fail to attend rather uh, any any uh, lessons and then ultimately pass the exam so the time we, we what we're going to assume is uh, their attendance was not recorded so we're going to treat that as missing so we were two missing values here but today i'm not going to talk about missing values i'll talk about them uh, on another on the next video okay so we're going to leave missing values like that and everything else uh, is fine except for that so um we want to change these values if you if you come i mean you measure if you come to your data you will see that uh the read uh, is ranging from zero to i mean from uh, a number that is above zero to anything around 29 36 73 you see and we do not have uh, a range in there so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say that this is a scale okay we're gonna take it as a as a scale and if you check for our data uh, exam is gonna be a scale as well because it's, it ranges from zero to a hundred attendance also ranges from zero to hundred right so we're gonna make it um, a scale again and then age um, we can also make it a scale so all of those becomes scales so scale 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 if you want to see the difference between scale nominal and ordinal check on my previous video I explained in detail what uh, what is the difference between the, the, those three but uh, gender is one and two uh, and we're gonna we're gonna take nominal so nominal let me just keep, let me just explain about nominal nominal just says that the variable data is not in any order okay so if you look at males or females there's there's no one who is bigger than the other okay uh so we can assign a one to males we can assign it a, a one to females it doesn't matter it doesn't mean that whenever it's a one it's smaller than whenever it's a two or vice versa so um such such variables where you are saying that um uh, there is no value that is bigger than the other or uh, there is no order in those values we call them nominal and whenever there is order uh, with a with a variable we then have to choose uh ordinal an example of ordinal we are talking about age okay and maybe maybe age groups right so we say from 0 to 10 from 11 to 15 from 15 to 20 there's an order in there and you can see that the order is ascending so those kind of variables that have a certain order we assign we assign to, to to them as the measure ordinal another example of a nominal variable is department if you're working in a department maybe hr is given a one uh it is given a two finance given a three there is whenever finance is three it does not necessarily mean that it's bigger than than hr which is assigned the one so there's no order for this particular variable there's no department that is bigger than the other and hence such kind of a variable is then termed nominal okay and then if if there's an order to a, to a variable we assign ordinal to it right so i'm just going to leave it at nominal uh because uh there's no order to that particular variable okay and then if you come to uh, your data view you see that you have your code read exam attendance age and gender uh, listed there but right, i'm just going to go through a few uh settings that you might uh, uh see uh behind it okay so i'm just going to go on options and then while i'm under options under general right you see that uh, under options i've got all these tabs that i can click and, and and jump into but for now i'm interested in general okay if you check under general you see that it says variable list should be displayed uh, in form of labels okay but you can also have an option to display it as names okay uh and if you choose names what basically means is um what it basically means is whenever you're doing your analysis uh instead of seeing the labels you'll actually be seeing what the names and i prefer seeing the names because the names are short labels are for the reason of those who i'm going to share the file with for them to know what that variable is all about okay if you just say code and you don't provide label no one will know but if you provide a description of label people will know what that label stands for so that's basically what what um what that option does and some other options that are might might, might be useful uh here um when you come to data right uh you can change a, a, a variety of options uh here and then if you go to output labels you can change your variety of options there that the, whenever i'm getting the output do i want to see labels or i want to see names and labels and i'm interested in seeing names only even variable values in item labels do i want to see labels or i want to see uh, uh the values uh, or i want to see values and labels so for now i'm going to leave it in labels and then we see what's going to happen uh, when we start doing analysis 
So uh, this is the second video that I'm doing when we are trying to create uh, an SPSS file. Uh, so just take note that uh, the next video will then be capturing this data uh, from here into our, our SPSS. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning and uh, remember to subscribe uh, if you are a new visitor to my channel. If you are um, an old visitor, I mean uh, if you are a regular visitor rather, thank you for sticking in and I thank you for your support um, and keep in touch. See you in the next video.